Let's get some insights in the news shaping the markets. For that, we welcome in David Bonson's with us, Chief Investment Officer at Bonson Group. Thank you for being here. Some of your thoughts on the market, what's been going on here as we await key, more and more key data from NVIDIA to the PCE. Some of your thoughts. Well, it's certainly been an impressive rebound over the last several weeks since that point in uh, late July and early August where we had all of the commotion. But what I think is most interesting about the comeback is that it hasn't actually been led by tech. A lot of the tech names have done well. They've certainly rebounded. But they haven't made new highs, and some of the names haven't even done well. They've actually lagged. And yet, overall market has moved quite a bit across all the indices. And of course, we had the Dow making uh, all-time high the other day. Financials, energy consumer staples leading this most recent rally. That's a broadening of the market that is uh, healthy and good for dividend growth investors like us. Yeah. So dividends, you think dividends sort of uh, stand the test of time. I just want to just expand on that. You mentioned some of the sectors that we really know for dividends, whether I, I always think of REITs, too, um, and uh, energy. I mean, it's just so many of the great old companies were dividend payers. It was a lot of the new growth companies that came out that didn't pay dividends. I mean, you have the dividend aristocrats, right? But I mean, my dad always loved dividends, right? You still a fan of these overall? Well, it's not just that I'm a fan of them. It's what we believe in and what we do. And I believe all investing comes down to a return of cash. And the debate is only how an investor thinks they're going to get cash back. Some believe that they will sustainably achieve uh, capital gains as a way of getting cash back forever. But everyone invests for some degree of return of cash. We believe dividends is a way to do it most consistently, reliably, and let the dividend indicate the health of the company, the dividend coming from free cash flow. The only thing I'd want to add to what you said, because I loved the way you describe it, is a lot of old companies, there was sort of a traditional understanding that minority owners of business got compensated from a dividend. But we need it to be a growing dividend. It's not just a high dividend. It's not just a consistent one, but a consistently growing one that indicates the health of a good company. Yeah, understood. I want to talk more about NVIDIA. I mean, people are really quantifying it as the biggest name of the season, the biggest name uh, earnings for the year, that may be the biggest earnings that we are seeing in multiple years. It could set the tone for, I, I don't know, the next millennium or something. Um, it's a big deal, isn't it? Uh, no, the soap opera around it might be sensationalistic, but it's one quarter, one company. And the problem with this for market index investors is that NVIDIA has become 6% of the S&P and just three companies have become 20%. Uh, you just have this massive weighting issue of concentration risk. Um, NVIDIA is going to end up having a very bad quarter at some point. It's inevitable. It may be today. It may be in next quarter or next year. I have no idea. But it will happen. And there is at this overvaluation at these stretched valuations when you get priced for perfection there's vulnerability there um, but I think most investors who again are long-term investors investing in companies not quarterly stock price movements have absolutely nothing to care in the world about Nvidia's uh, afternoon results look look I mean the options players are in you could see some big swings if this comes in, like you said, look, they're going to have a bad quarter at some point, right, whether it's today or another time, it could bring down, because of how heavily weighted it is in the indices, it could fall and everybody owns it. It could bring down these indexes. It could set, it could set off uh, triggers. It could set off algorithms. It could set off selling. It could set off negativity in tech. It could set off negativity for, the neck, for, for a time. I don't know how long. I like to think that uh, I'm a bull in the long term. But it could set off some selling, at least for the near term. Don't you agree with that? But all those things are what we call noise and ultimately um, completely immaterial. Uh, my favorite analogy in history is the dot-com crash of March 2000, where for that year, we know what happened to the NASDAQ. And there were a lot of just terrible companies. NVIDIA is not a terrible company. It's just a very overpriced one. Um, but a lot of terrible companies went to zero. Uh, a lot of companies like Cisco went way down and still haven't come back up. I think NVIDIA will end up being in that camp eventually, but the Dow was up on the year. Large cap value was up on the year. 
Six of the 10 S&P sectors were up on the year. So it really depends how well one is diversified. And if they have all their eggs in the big tech, NVIDIA basket, AI plays, et cetera, I certainly understand they're going to suffer. Uh, but no, I think that there is an overhype around it. But that speaks to the dysfunction, the, the way a lot of investors are aligned, that they're just not diversified the way they think they are because they're over levered to one play. Yeah. What about the elections? Also noise? Well, for the time being, and this is something we've studied a lot and written a lot about, the market right now doesn't have any opinion on what the election means to the market because the market knows what many of us know, which is that this is a 50-50 election, and that even if I knew, you knew, and Mr. S&P knew who was going to win the White House, which none of us do, we don't necessarily know who's going to win the Senate or the House. And there are scenarios by which, let's say, Vice President Harris wins the White House, but the Senate goes to Republican majority. I don't think markets mind gridlock that that much. Uh, so there's different specifications within healthcare, within energy. There's policy ramifications depend, depending on who will win. But uh, this has seemed to become a very 50-50 country. Uh, polling and the Electoral College indicate that we're very likely to not know who will win until November. So the markets can't really price that in very effectively ahead of time. And then when you add that other layer of where the House may go, and especially the Senate, because I think the Republicans have a very good chance. If they win Montana, they're obviously going to win West Virginia. So if they win Montana, you get a 51-49 Republican Senate. Then I don't really really think it matters as much. Good to see you. David Bonson, a great conversation. Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. Thanks, David.